Hi and welcome to Cobb. We know this isn't normally what you hear at the top of any episode of ours so far, but this one is special. We're coming up on our 50th episode and Sudeep and I really want to thank you for listening, for the comments you've sent, for the feedback you've given us and especially for the suggestions of the topics you've made because that's where we we sometimes struggle because we don't know what to talk about and we've leaned on you to tell us what you want to listen and that's helped us a big deal and going forward we'd love to organize this a little better so guys the idea is to try and get to know you and your preferences better and to facilitate that uh, we'll be putting a form in the show notes as well as in the comments wherever you are listening this podcast from we request you to share uh, something about yourself as well as Uh, some of your preferences and feedback for the show and that will help us customize the content and make it even more useful for you looking forward for this small help from your end and hoping to provide you content that you will continue to love and continue to listen thank you very much welcome to cob conversations on the business of brands with sudeep chavla and sharvan raghavan So Sharon, I have observed that typically in a company, marketers tend to have slightly longer careers as compared to a number of salespeople. Is that true? Yeah, of course you will find long term, you know, long enduring sales guys in various uh, companies. But if you just look at an average tenure of a sales guy, you huh. look at average tenure of a marketer. Okay. I found too often. that the attrition and the turnaround in sales is much higher oh. and marketers tend to have a longer career okay yeah is that because they don't have monthly targets or something possibly part of the reason but <laughs> honestly my articulation is that uh, in marketing it is difficult to get found out you can't spot marketing idiots very easily <laughs> okay where are we headed with this now so in sales as well as in marketing hmm. whenever we get into our careers we tend to be lone warriors uh, sales especially because you are in some state some region out there trying to fight your own battles you have your team besides you right uh, and sometimes in marketing also we we make it uh, like that and uh, you know in these pursuit too often uh, we tend to fall into mediocrity or as uh, mr gai kiyosaki says bozosity <laughs> yeah and uh, the bozos in sales get found out very soon uh, because, because of the numbers because of the numbers because they are na- not able to show the numbers they are not able to explain the performance they are not able to put any growth levers under it right it just uh, takes significantly longer to find find out a bozo in marketing and hence i think i've that is why i've titled our discussion for today as surviving the bozosity okay surviving the bozos yeah surviving surviving so for example we've all seen movies where you know there are zombies all around and then you have to survive the zombies <laughs> okay. right? you don't want to become a zombie Similarly, this one is for marketers. How to avoid becoming a bozo? Yes, sir. We good. Okay, excellent. So, uh, the idea is that all the marketers out there who are listening to this podcast, how can they gain from some of our experience to initiate do things early in their career, so that they don't fall into my definition of marketing bozos. So, when you say bozos, no, Sudeep. Are you talking yeah. about a collective thinking that happens within the company, and a marketer towing the line and fitting into that collective thinking? No, I actually mean that a marketing bozo would be somebody who is possibly chugging along, 
extending whatever little bit support that is anyways happening in the company and not honestly taking the charge of their brand and taking it any in any definitive direction right just going yeah. with the flow and not taking not creating any impact of their own correct and so therefore you might survive with that for a couple of years or more but you will get found out once somebody wakes up and asks you for a specific direction or a specific point of view or a specific action it will take right. longer but you know and by that time you would have already become a bozo fair enough yeah. okay so therefore uh, the idea is to help marketers survive the bozosity and on that pursuit therefore let's start from the first principles you know okay. a lot of the for a lot of people marketing is their uh, either the first role or the second or the third role hmm. and usually you have not done anything like that before you get into that role right you yeah. basically have a bit of a gap from your mba and then you spend time in sales what say 3 to 4 years maybe and then land up in marketing with no real first hand experience correct and too often uh, sharan what is romanticized in the society and in our jobs is the busyness of a person true very true the more busy you look the more harried you look the more hard working you perceived correct people tend to think that you are more productive right yeah and in sales also the more uh, you know the push you are doing the more follow ups you are doing uh, with your team as well as with uh, everybody else tend to produce incremental tends to produce incremental results right yeah so therefore uh, the the belief gets reinforced that if i'm busy i'm doing good true yeah Uh, however the first thing that i would want to tell all marketers that when you get into a marketing role uh, this thinking will completely turn on its head especially when you're starting off okay yeah suddenly you will find yourself in a job which has slightly longer horizons a lot of unstructured work uh, a lot of the work where the brief is even not known very well hmm. nobody is measuring you every week every month against a certain target yeah Uh, and so therefore you will tend to think that you are in a thinking and an activity lull nothing is happening but don't marketers also have not necessarily monthly targets but they do have an annual target which they're tracking to right yeah, yeah of course so we track monthly targets also we get mm. impacted by monthly targets also but that's a peripheral part of the role that's the mm. final deliverable maybe right but there's a lot of stuff that goes on between you know between the time you think you have started influencing the targets yeah or but, versus sorry. just being a recipient of the target and the performance right yeah so therefore uh, think of company and the brand as a train hmm yeah for a for a significant part of your initial career you will be a passenger on the train hmm you might think that you're moving along with the train you might also think that you're contributing but till the time you're not an engine i have news for you you're not contributing <laughs> and if you continue for too long somebody else will be the engine and you will be a bozo mm-hmm. yeah so therefore uh, you know initially as we get into those roles we want to find immediate activity we want to look busy and hence what seems intuitive is one of the two things hmm. one you start looking at your sales numbers every day yeah a lot of the people when they move from sales to marketing that is where they draw their comfort from right and then you start talking to the field you start talking to logistics to make sure that depots have sufficient stock and all of that yeah or your import teams and you know you want to want to create a difference or the second side is when you pick up one of the current projects anything mm. which was handed over to you and you start following with, up with your cross functional team Hmm. that's how those are the two easier ways of looking busy yeah <laughs> becoming busy feeling busy and therefore feeling productive right yeah good but not sufficient right okay. so therefore uh, what should you be busy with then i'm hmm. not asking everybody to kick back their shoes put their feet up on the desk and just sit around right so the when a marketer is, comes in what are they supposed to be doing yeah so therefore 
uh, one of the key things and we have spoken about this in the past uh, we have said that the core job of a marketer is to represent the consumer and their thinking within the company right and hence before you even get that get to that stage you are supposed to develop what we call as almost a telepathic empathy hmm. with the consumer yeah yeah and we had defined it in one of our previous episodes where we said that telepathic empathy is where you are able to almost predict on behalf of your consumer as to how will they act how will they make a decision what will they do etc etc hmm. and to be able to do that you need to know your consumer very well you need to meet your consumers and you need to interact with them sufficient number of times so that you start understanding them better so you need to get out of the office and just go visit consumers visit consumers and when you visit consumers have some kind of a have completely open mind like we said in one of our previous episodes that be prepared to sound dumb hmm. start from first principles yeah and every right. time when you are going towards the end of your know, interaction have one or the other hypothesis that you want to check hmm. yeah see what is it that your understanding has started to become about your consumer get a reconfirmation hmm. whether your understanding is correct or not right yeah so therefore i assume that once you start meeting consumers you would start making some hypothesis some structures in your head etc etc i would not still call it a conviction right yeah the reason i stress upon this word is because we have said this in the past the only job of a marketer is to sell conviction right you might not still be able to uh, create conviction or make convictions in your head but you will be able to build a point of view true yeah so you might not be step, you might not be in believe in it strong enough to pass it on to other, to others but you would have you start building your gut for it yeah and you know to build a conviction you need to empathize with consumer at multiple levels hmm in point of view you can have uh you know you can have your thinking straight about one or two specific uh, uh points about the consumer for example right. you might have a point of view about your point of sale material because mm. you have now started understanding how your consumer shops mm. where do they go right. what do they first look at what are the key things that they think about before they make a choice etc etc hmm. yeah so therefore you might have a point of view about that but to build a conviction you need a bird's eye view of consumer's life their fear motivations their attitudes behaviors etc etc right yeah so therefore the first thing that you should be busy about is getting out of the office meeting the consumer building a point of view got it but i have a question yeah now when the the marketer comes from sales into marketing and they are yes they can be busy with a lot of the peripheral stuff and they can spend time getting to know the consumer but you said they've got to start making an impact now i have seen it i'm sure you have too when you start your marketing career you don't have the the luxury or even the ability or the authority to make the changes you want made in the system so where does this marketer start making this impact and making these changes yeah it's good to have a good. consumer perspective what do i do with it great question and i i think a lot of the people who are listening to us would also be thinking on the same lines which brings me to my second point hmm. so my first point was about first being ready to start making an impact right which is about being busy in the right places in the right forums hmm. yeah second is to start with you will want to change the small things okay yeah so your impact would be visible in small things for example i gave you an example of point of sale material so you might have a point of view about what is the kind of handler dispenser box you know uh, stock unit etc that you want at a particular outlet and you will be able to build your consumer understanding into it that this is what i think about what the consumer wants right uh, what he or she looks for and therefore this is how we should do it yeah. yeah so therefore when you start doing that not only does it create conviction in your head but it also starts sending a message to rest of the people in the organization that this person has started understanding 
his or her consumer hmm. and you are now positively impacting or moving uh, some aspects of your brand such that they become more amenable to your consumers right first being busy in building pov and then trying to make small changes this is a recursive or a iterative pro- process right build pov make small change build pov make small change etc etc i keep doing it and only when you keep doing it you will be able to master the art of building a pov and then putting it to use so when you say make changes is this the type of marketers allowed to make mistakes on their own and learn from yeah. them yeah of course so and in fact you know these are things which are not as high stakes for example as an advertising campaign but to build conviction within yourself as well as within the system these are the kind of things that you can work on if you're a if you're a product manager you would start possibly interacting with your uh, uh, with your software team or your developer team and you will start impacting some amount of you know features which which you think will take ux in the positive direction right you might still not be ready to completely redesign refurbish your entire website or your landing page but you will still you will start making those small changes and then you will look at data you will look at consumer feedback and you will either feel vindicated or you will feel that you've learned something your understanding has become more nuanced or you it's it has become better it's amazing and it's kind of establish the fact that why you're a marketing leader you wouldn't call that a mistake hmm. you call it vindication or a learning opportunity which is i mean which is pretty much the right way to put it but very few of us do that right Thank you for listening to Cobb Conversations on the Business of Brands with Sudeep Chavla and Sharvana Raghavan. Subscribe and learn more at cobbcast.net. That's c o b b c a s t dot net. So, therefore, to avoid being a bozo. while you are trying to move some of your logistical work tracks ahead it is very very critical to center a lot of your time and work around consumers building pov and then making start making small changes got it so yeah small changes are fine sudeep but as a marketer i've got career ambitions right and i've come here out of passion i want to make the life changing or brand landscape changing decisions and start at least start influencing them So let me push you to the next one. In Bozo City, how do I survive it not just with small changes but how do I progress into making the bigger or even influencing the bigger decisions? Is there a transition phase? Excellent. So now we are transitioning from surviving to thriving. Ah, yes. Thriving yeah. in Bozo City. Yeah, so now you are thriving. Not only have you successfully avoided being a bozo, but you have now set yourself up to thrive right but you've only set yourself up okay you have not started thriving yet you have not started thriving yet so now the first thing the third point aiming for the bigger ones hmm. bigger changes hmm. like okay. you said that i i want to be a marketer who contributes positively to the brand make a difference to consumers life hmm. create an impact and therefore build a career for myself that kind of an ambition hmm. is needed yeah i have seen marketers in the past who don't even have that ambition they just want to survive throughout their careers and is that okay uh might be okay for some of them but i would honestly not want to be around that tribe at all mm. yeah because they're um, not growth seekers they are bozos <laughs> oh they are the bozos who make yes. up bozo city <laughs> correct they okay. have succumbed to bozosity unfortunately and if you become like them you know who you are right yeah so therefore aiming for the bigger ones aiming to create that difference etc is something which will push you to the next level hmm. where uh, again the route to all of this is building better understanding of the consumer so you would now start building a little more flesh around some of the skeletal understanding that you built about the consumer right and thereby uh, you should be able to create what we call as consumer portrait or consumer persona hmm 
yeah you should be able to for example give them a name and describe them almost to say that this is how they look this is how they feel this is what they feel about things these are the activities that they do and this is how they make their decisions an avatar of the consumer themselves almost yeah for example if you were uh, if you were to play god you should be able to recreate a typical consumer type or typical consumer types if you have right. any okay yeah. it's the typical and not the ideal not the ideal okay and could you explain the difference there yeah excellent that that was a brilliant point sharan in too often uh, when we start thinking ideal then you want somebody who is almost crazy about your brand who is almost you know thinking your about your category all the time the loyalist and loyalist who are making decisions as you would want them to exactly hmm. yeah which i think is a mistake understanding the typical consumer is very critical because again we have said this in the past that your brand is your center of the center of your universe but for the consumer it is just a speck in their universe in the speck in the periphery it's not even yeah yeah not the, at the center of course yeah it's yeah so and awful. sometimes not even a noticeable speck yeah right so with all humility you have to make uh, what is called a typical consumer portrait not an ideal consumer portrait mm. yeah when you start developing that kind of an understanding then you start forming what i call as conviction <clears throat> so what you formed earlier was pov point of view right what you now started forming is conviction because now you have started understanding in a 360 starting understanding the consumer in a 360 degree manner right so you've started substantiating your hypothesis with facts and actual consumer interactions correct so that's the time where you are aiming for big things and you are preparing for big things so this is where you've started thriving right yeah and you know then when you are starting to aim that is where the marketing flywheel kicks in hmm. where we said that now you've formed your conviction and second stage was you start convincing people around you mm. right right now previously when we spoke about it we spoke about it as a principle today right. we are speaking about activities okay explain the difference please so principle is that like i said forming conviction within yourself convincing people around you and convincing the world right so those were the principles i said that is how a marketer defines themselves right today we are talking about act- actual activities and behaviors hmm. uh, which the marketer should go through to survive the bozosity okay yeah. is this where we go back to one of our earlier episodes where you said different ways of transferring con- conviction starting with the leaders right down to the field force is that yeah. what we're talking about is the activity here yeah so okay. the content of the activity will be about choosing who do you which audience you are talking to and what is the content of that talk hmm. when you talk to leaders you talk principles hmm. yeah when you talk to sales team or the team in the front you talk to them about specific use cases or specific examples right, right. or deliverables yeah right i think we're going uh, to link that episode here in the, in the show sure. notes because that gives a proper transition of what kind of conviction is required at every level correct awesome okay in this one i am just trying to build one more point to say that mm. when you have started transferring conviction when you are talking to people hmm it is very critical that we seek feedback hmm every feedback that you seek tends to either vindicate what you are saying or gives you a minor adjustment that you need to make to either your understanding or to your articulation okay but let me just pause you there a bit i have come into marketing i have spent time understanding the consumer building a hypothesis in after which i've proven my hypothesis and built conviction right shouldn't i be the authority in this space why do i seek feedback from anybody other than the consumer why is that important because finally you are hypothesizing on behalf of the consumer you can never be an authority yeah okay so therefore when Uh, when you're talking to people now a lot of people say marketing is common sense it is actually most of the uh, time yes most of the time so therefore but you have built a method of you know trying to assimilate as much common sense as possible into your work hmm. yeah 
otherwise if you act only by common sense it is almost gut yeah true uh, as a marketer you're trying to put some process around it and hence mm-hmm. you know you've you've gone through that process you've tried to assimilate a lot of common sense but whenever you're interacting with people interacting people in your team many of them will come back with some more nuggets of common sense that you possibly either missed or you over uh, overthought about them and possibly rejected them or you overlooked them yeah and therefore yeah. all of those deserve some amount of consideration and then careful rejection or careful folding in okay so you yeah. lean on your stakeholders for this or agencies where do you get everybody. the feedback from okay everybody so this step is what i call while it is transferring conviction i also called it crowdsourcing wisdom ah okay yeah so therefore you build some wisdom you build some uh, conviction then when you talk to people you're talking to people so that you are able to sharpen your articulation to its mm. most effective manner right yeah not only would people tell you something about your consumers quite a bit of quite a bit of uh, instances would be around the fact that you will get feedback on your articulation yeah because their objections help you fine tune the words you use to convey the conviction correct because True. you will get that people are possibly not understanding it in the same manner that you intended right and hence your understanding might be right but your communication your articulation might not be right mm. makes yeah? perfect sense yes so therefore this is the fourth step so your first okay. one was knowing your consumer building a pov second one was changing small things number third was aiming for bigger ones where you build your conviction right and fourth one is crowdsourcing wisdom when you okay, start now transferring conviction uh, got it but i get how i can be a good marketer with this right that by things i do how do i blow the lid of the top how do i go beyond as a marketer now i'm listening to people i'm mm-hmm. crowdsourcing wisdom Hmm. now how do i become the wise guy within the system because i that's what gets me promoted right what can i do no i think you're already the wise guy now if you're doing all of these <laughs> four okay. three four things at the start of your career i never did yeah so therefore if you're already i'm still learning that <laughs> uh, so if you're still doing that you are the wise guy now the fact okay. is that in step number 3 when you're building your conviction you want hmm. to aim for the big things right right now when you start thriving this is where you take the game to the next level okay where the advice is that once you start at that when you start reaching that level where you have started building conviction you've started convincing people around you also now how high you think how high you aim hmm. will determine what is the kind of impact you are able to create within the company and on the consumers okay explain that please yeah for example when we were working on cadbury dairy milk the idea was to appropriate the meetha occasions within a indian household right yeah so therefore the team was brave enough to enumerate all the occasions and go after them one by one hmm. yeah and they were thinking high they were believing that they'll be able to appropriate a number of these occasions by influencing consumer thinking by creating various interventions advertising intervention the, so this would be the kuch meetha ho jaye campaign and the meethas the, campaigns yeah yes the kuch meetha ho jaye campaign has run for decades now right yeah oh. and is it been so, that long yeah wow. quite a bit so you know it has taken them a lot of things for example when we wanted to appropriate the post dinner meetha occasion which is rounding off a square meal mm mm-hmm. so that is when you know we had started very early with cadbury desserts right meethe mein kya hai kya meetha hai meetha hai kuch to meetha meetha hai hmm. and then uh, you know over a period of time trying to trigger this habit in consumers to keep a chocolate in their refrigerator uh, by getting into in home packs and then an advertising with wahida rehman was created right yeah so cadbury has been at it the team has been at it to try and appropriate occasions by giving consumers sufficient number of uh, nudges hmm sometime communication nudges sometime packaging nudges nudges on the point of sale material right, right? 
बिकॉज दे बिलीव या पहली तारीख वॉज अनदर एग्जीक्यूशन ऑफ सिमिलर काइंड बिकॉज एट दैट पॉइंट इन टाइम वी बिलीव दैट यू नो दैट्स एन ओकेजन वेन यू नो फादर कम्स विद देयर सैलरी एंड या द पे डे देन देर वर मोमेंट्स ऑफ यू नो स्मॉल सीमिंगली स्मॉल ओकेजन टू अस बट फॉर दैट पर्सन दे आर बिग right like the bus stop one right yeah so so therefore you will see that the team was being brave enough to say that we will appropriate this occasion so just the the act that you dreamt and then you mm. went for it mm. will make sure that you will keep taking moon shots mm. and thereby aiming for greatness okay yeah but taking moon shots is very very critical now if five star for a fairly long period of time was all about the product right that it is such an engaging eat that you completely lose yourself etc etc and now after that the the you know even within that the team was taking moon shots and now they have taken it to the next level right which is about the thing do nothing yeah the whole space of nothingness and therefore taking moon shots with it that what could nothingness mean okay. meaningfully yeah. to consumers of theirs is something that they are aiming for right so i get the moonshot bit okay but i have mm. a question uh, that a lot of consultants not me but other consultants use mm. take a moonshot that is so far out mm. that you never held accountable for it like mm. you said that <laughs> marketers can have a long career by ah. setting the target so far away that they have to survive until the target is met correct so, no i think as a marketing uh, leader how do you differentiate between these two <laughs> see that is also a uh, also a factor of how your brand your company are placed okay yeah and what is the kind of success and your revenue growth etc your brand is currently seeing you're a for example you're a startup hmm. you're just launching Hmm. because you're just launching you need to be able to create some amount of revenue for yourself yeah so therefore your first objective will be to find a pmf product market fit right so you will try some of these things and you will make sure that you are able to get some kind of a revenue from a certain cohort and hmm. hence you know that your proposition your product your price and your promotion is working hmm. right so right. therefore the stage of the brand and the stage of the company also determine Hmm. what is the kind of moonshot that you are going for got it yeah similarly if you are a brand you are already a category leader you are chugging along at a 20% cagr you are part of an fmcg you are already a whatever 500000 crore brand hmm. then the kind of moonshots that you can take is very different right yeah but my i would urge all marketers at any stage of their career within Uh, a startup or in an established company or working on a small brand large brand etc etc to take moon shots which can be afforded by their brand and their company at that stage mm -hmm. yeah only if you do that will you be able to aim for excellence excellence doesn't come from safe work okay excellence always comes from moon shots so thriving yeah. in bozo city comes with its own risks yeah, yeah. so marketer's job is to take risk that's the only thing that we do we push the brand into a slightly more unknown territory because we think that the consumer would like it because we are mm -hmm. hypothesizing on the behalf of consumer right. but nobody else in the company has possibly thought in that direction mm -hmm. that's why too often marketing is termed as the headlight of the company you're trying to peer into the darkness and trying to therefore show the direction there right. is obviously the steering the four wheels and the engine that have to do the job but somebody has to stare into the darkness and try to shine some light on it uh -huh. yeah so therefore that's the role that you are supposed to do if you are not a bozo yeah so this Got is it. my fifth step which is aiming for the stars taking a moon shot and if you are able to successfully do all of this again and again and again because you are you might change brands even mm. on the same brand you might reappraise your knowledge your understanding about it you want to consist continuously upgrade your knowledge you will go through the same cycle over and over again right and i think that's a lovely analogy you put about shining the light because as a marketer when you start your career when you get into marketing you have a craving for the spotlight but 
that's probably not where you grow. You, when you become the spotlight and start giving direction to the company, is when actual growth begins as a marketer. Correct. I think that's a lovely analogy. So, correct. We spoke about people coming into marketing and looking busy. And instead of looking busy, what can they do to become better marketers or to even progress? Is to basically go out and meet consumers. I think we've said it. Our guests on the show have said it. And I don't think this can, can be said enough that mm. just going out and meeting and talking to consumers is the best way for a marketer to start building conviction. And when you have a bit of conviction, when you have your hypothesis in place, start testing it by impacting small things in your brand. You might not have the authority or the credibility within the system to make the large moves, but make the small moves and win your favor or win or establish your credibility by doing these small changes and then transition into making the larger decisions by creating or being the champion of the typical customer avatar or the consumer avatar and transferring your conviction to others and be careful when you transfer this conviction and be careful to listen to what others have to say and use their feedback to keep articulating it in a way that you're crowdsourcing wisdom, not just from your internal stakeholders, but also from your agency partners and everybody you talk to. And once you have done that and you've become the wise guy in the system, take your moonshot. Do not be afraid to take risks. And when you've gone through the cycle of becoming a better marketer, I believe, I'm not sure if we said this, but the company also has the willingness to bet on your moonshots. And that is how you can progress as a marketer. And that's how you can build your activities as a marketer when you, in your career. And that's how you thrive and not just survive in Bozo City. <laughs> Very, well put. Very well put, Sharon. I couldn't have said it better. Hmm. Brilliant. Thank you so much for this, Sudeep. Lovely one. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you for listening to Call. Conversations on the business of brands with Sudeep Chavla and Sharvana Raghavan. Subscribe and learn more at corpcast.net. That's C-O-B-B-C-A-S-T dot net.